So let's say you have your store set up, things are going great, the customers are ordering things from you, they're buying things from you, you're making sales, things are awesome, but they're not leaving any feedback for you after they buy something from you. So what do you do? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you a tool that I use to help increase the chances of them leaving feedback after they buy something from me. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Lenny from Simon Says Resale, where I go ahead and share my experiences selling things on Amazon FBA. I also create some how-to videos and some tips and tricks to help you guys as well sell some things on Amazon. So in this video, like I mentioned before, we're gonna go ahead and talk about a tool that I use. It's called Feedback5. It's uh, feedback5.com. There are a number of other tools out there like it, but this is the tool that I've kind of landed on, and it's been working out pretty well for me. It's fairly cheap as far as price goes, um, but it does pretty much what I want to do. So ultimately what I did is I probably kind of came across an issue earlier on, I'm sure you guys probably came across the issue too, where you have your store set up, things are going great, um, but you're not noticing the customer feedback ratings going up from your store. You're selling books, you know, you're selling a lot of books, and or whatever it is, I keep selling books because that's mainly what I sell, but whatever you're selling, you're selling your items, people are buying them, they're not leaving any feedback after they get them. Why? Well, if you've done some research on Amazon and this particular issue is you're not going to get as much feedback from an order compared to eBay, for example. Um, it, it does take a while and maybe even more orders to actually get some decent numbers in as far as feedback goes. Uh, for example, I was a couple hundred items in and I don't have, I probably have less than 50 uh, of feedback as far as people leaving feedback for me. Um, there have been a few times where people left feedback that it wasn't my fault, specifically my fault. It was more the, the, the carrier, you know, maybe it was um, you know, FedEx, UPS, whoever it was. Maybe they damaged, it got damaged on the way or a customer mistakenly put the wrong rating in and I actually caught that at one point. So always be careful, always check your feedback rating every now and then, maybe once or twice a week. You know, just see what your numbers are, if they start climbing, you know, whatever, maybe you have 22 uh, feedback ratings and stuff like that. Keep an eye on them and then click on it and you can see what the comment is, if there are any, from the customer. And what you're looking for is to make sure that they line up. Uh, for example, one customer mentioned um, they gave me a one star out of five and they mentioned book was great. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I actually reached out to them separately myself and I'm like, hey, thanks for the feedback. However, you mentioned the book was great, but you gave me a one star. So about 24 hours later, I got a response back from the customer directly saying, oh, I apologize. I put the wrong feedback rating in. It should have been a five. So there are some policies and rules with how to remove it and, and, and modify those things. You obviously can't do it yourself. So I contacted Amazon first and I was like, hey, I noticed this customer did something by mistake. Um, can I remove it? And thankfully, Amazon was able to remove that bad feedback. And once it gets removed, I'm not sure if they can uh, provide additional feedback or a replacement feedback, but I really wasn't really worried. I'd rather have no feedback than negative feedback. So. I was fine with that. And there was a time when someone had shipped, uh, or I had someone bought a book from my store and I got shipped via FBA and it got damaged in transit. And I asked the customer to send me a picture. The book was completely destroyed, unfortunately. So I sent Amazon a before and after picture, the best ones I had, especially a before picture, and they were able to take off the negative feedback as well. So if you do get negative feedback and it's something that really isn't in your control, give Amazon support a call or a chat session and, and tell them about it, but enough about that. So what I want to talk about was Feedback 5. So again, the site is feedback5.com. Um, I'm going to go into a really quick shallow dive for you just to kind of show you the, the pricing plans and some of the features. It's a very simple, very straightforward product. Um, ultimately what it does for me, it constantly you know, nudges or nudges the, the, the customer saying, hey, thanks for the order please don't forget to leave some feedback. And it does it in a certain interval. So there's, there's like a setting you can set up similar to um, uh, reprice it in a way where it kind of you set different intervals and how often do you want it to nudge them, how often do you want it to say it, how often do you want it to ask them at a certain point. So it's a pretty decent program. I'm using maybe 10% of the entire program's functionality and ability because the more you pay, the more bells and whistles you get. I think I'm only paying about $10 a month and the amount of orders I'm getting in every week, it seems to be pretty, 
pretty uh, considerate and um, appropriate as far as how, uh, how much I'm paying and what it's doing. So I use the bare minimum features, and there's a lot more you'll see in the, in the, the demonstration I'll show you. But ultimately it is, it, it, it sends an email out two weeks after they order. I think that's the default setting. And then it sends another email, I think, after, a week after that. So it kind of gives them two follow-up emails. Now, from what I heard, I could be wrong and someone can correct me here in the comments, but I think when someone orders something, they already get a feedback reminder from Amazon. And then this one is more just a follow-up. So ultimately what this program does, it helps follow up a reminder to the customer, hey, you bought this item, please give us feedback, we'll appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, the end game here is to get more feedback, actually get good feedback. So make sure your books are, you know, listed correctly, make sure that, you know, whatever you need to do to make sure the customers are happy, um, you do that. You know, the, the biggest issue you'll see that's kind of on your side or your problem is if you don't condition the book well. So if I say a book is like new when it really is good, you're going to get bad feedback. If I, the same thing, if I list it as very good, but it's good, you're going to get some bad feedback. Now, you know, there is a gray area with all this as far as conditions go, and I can do a whole video on that. But customers, you know, have their own mindset. You know, some customers are used to getting used books. Some customers aren't. For example, I had one customer that purchased a book from me, and it was a used book. It clearly said it in the actual description, um, but they gave me like a 4 out of 5, and all they said was... Um, something along the lines of, you know, this is my first used book order. That was it. No issue with the book. They weren't happy with the book. Just that blank statement right there. And I was like, all right, and I just kind of dealt with it. I, I didn't fight it or anything. I'm like, four out of five, whatever. But you never know what the customer is going to be. You don't know if they're someone that orders books, use books a lot from Amazon. You don't know if they're going to like it or not. So I'm sure you heard this a lot before is whenever you're listing books, just make sure you're you know, not listing them too high, you know, kind of under condition them in a way. So if you, if you think the book is very good, it's probably good. You never know. But again, it's going to take more practice to kind of get it right. And you're not, you're not going to get it perfect. It's, there's no perfect black and white type of answer here with conditions and stuff. Yes, Amazon has guidelines and please look at those if you haven't, but there's always something. And even if you do it to Amazon standards, the customer may see it differently. And at that point, you may be able to fight it if you want, but I'm okay with four out of five. That's perfectly fine with me. So, yeah, so the app, that's all it does is it kind of helps you kind of re automate the nudging process. So you don't have to do anything. It does it for you. And it links up to your Amazon account, which is awesome. So you'll see in a few, when you go into the orders section of um, the app, you'll see all my orders of all the customers. And you actually can exclude feedback if you want so for example maybe someone did maybe someone wasn't happy with an order um, and they put some feedback on my Amazon store but maybe it wasn't the feedback five sending them the reminder maybe they just did it themselves and if if you don't kind of see those ahead of time what's gonna happen is the customer will buy the book um, they'll get the book they're unhappy with it for whatever reason they'll leave a negative comment or oh yeah they'll leave a negative comment and then feedback five may send it out anyway. It kind of shouldn't because it should detect that feedback was already submitted, so maybe it doesn't do that. I haven't really figured it out yet, but I'd, I kind of leave this on autopilot and I just let it run. But what I usually do just to kind of for due diligence is if someone isn't happy with a book, I automatically go into feedback five and put the order number and exclude them from any further communication with feedback five. So they're not gonna get nudged anymore. But I think, now that I just thought about it is, Feedback 5 may be intelligent enough to not nudge them if there's already feedback. So you might, I might be already okay. I'm just kind of you know going above and beyond and being paranoid as I usually am. But ultimately what this app, what this program does, it sends them reminder emails to leave feedback because your end game here is to get your feedback ratings high. So you know when you're a new seller, you have zero feedback from people. So as you sell books and as you kind of move on and get sales, those feedback scores should get higher. You know, you start at zero, you go up to however many. So you know when you look at a certain seller, you see a number next to their store name or their seller name, that's the feedback rating. Um, so the more you have, the better. And obviously the rating that ties with that is, is good too. So for example, you can have 20 people leaving feedback, but your rating, your percentage is 98%, which isn't terrible. So they kind of work hand in hand there. 
So again, all this program really does, at least that I've used it for, is reminding people to get feedback. Otherwise, you're kind of leaning more towards Amazon to do their automation thing, their automated emails going out, which I, I don't do. Because um, I always had that in the back of my mind, at least when I first started is, you know, I need to get my feedback scores up. I need to get the number of people leaving feedback up. How do I do that? Well, I have to go in every reach order and do it myself? No. You pay a little extra money monthly and you have a system, a tool, automate that whole thing for you. And the cool thing about it, as I'll show you, is you can set up templates. They'll give you kind of a standard template, or I think I got mine. You can use mine if you want, you'll see in a second. But they give you a standard template. You can put your own store image on the top if you want. You can create your own text in the reminder and have them send out. So there's a kind of feedback request, and there's a second one, and there's a product review. So those of you doing private label, there is a um, product review reminder as well. So don't, don't for those that are uh, private label sellers and not just, you know, use book sellers or use whatever sellers, those doing private label, this also works for you too. And you can get, there's a lot of extra bells and whistles with it, especially if you're doing massive private label stuff, you're doing a lot of it. Um, but it seems to work pretty well for me just selling used books. And I do do private label and I have it set up, um, but more of my volume right now is my books because I have probably... I think over 1,500 books in my store, so a lot of it's going towards that. But without further ado, I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to kind of pivot over to my little screen share session. I'll go ahead and show you a little bit about Feedback 5. I'm not going to show you everything because, one, I don't use all the features, and, two, I don't want you to see all kinds of other things, details about my, my, my customers and my information, so I may skip a few parts, but I'll give you the general idea and how it works and what it looks like and the different price plans. But... Um, just to show you that I use it. And again, it's an amazing product. It's worth it. There are probably others out there, but I haven't researched enough to really compare a bunch. If you already have one that you're using and you like it, stick with it. If you see something in this video that you like compared to the one you're maybe using now, maybe this Feedback 5 is cheaper. Maybe there's a feature in here that you like better. I think you can do a free trial anyway. You can get 100 free emails in a month or something like that. So check it out. It's a trial anyway if you want. It doesn't hurt to do a free trial. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pivot over to the little demo video I have. Right. Okay, so here we are, uh, Feedback 5's website, feedback5.com. Um, just to quickly show you, you obviously can go in here and take a look at what it's all about, but I kind of summarized it up, and this program really isn't too difficult. Um, it basically just sends emails out for you on behalf um, of your store, of yourself, but in an automated fashion, so you go ahead, don't, don't have to constantly do it yourself and spend the time to do it. So I just want to send you really quick into the uh, plans page here just to show you um, right now I have I have the basic plan which is more than enough that I need I don't have my volume isn't that high there isn't that much so I can get away with the basic plan um, I includes 250 emails a month which is right around where I am I guess I'm not really hitting that I'm not capping out right now um, you know depending on the month itself like for example uh, December, January are usually the busier months and I can definitely agree with that especially my January month was probably the busiest so far so I may go over that in January but for now in these months after that I think 250 a month is right around where I need to be you know of course the more books you have in your store you know the better they are maybe sales rank, condition, whatever popularity um, you may get more sales and again I'm just talking about books but whatever you're selling if you're selling everything else other than books keep in mind how many sales you have per month and kind of gauge that before you choose a plan otherwise you'll run out of emails obviously you can upgrade really quick which isn't a big deal but th they use that to kind of gauge everything as well so I'm gonna log in really quick to show you so at first you get this nice little dashboard some of these items are kind of um, null or at zero because it hasn't pulled any information in yet. Um, tells you how many emails sent so far in the last seven days, orders imported, stuff like that. Um, most of the stuff from Amazon is pretty instant as far as orders coming in and and things updating. Like for example, not only are orders coming in, but if someone leaves a, f a feedback on your Amazon store, it'll get populated here to show you, and that's kind of what these other numbers are. Um, so you have some product reviews, if you have any um, private label stuff, you have some feedback stuff here. 
you know that stuff's not coming in these orders are coming in here you know how many are how many emails were sent click throughs opened imported um, how many emails I have remaining this month uh, the month is you know what is it the tenth or so right now so the month's you know kind of a third way or kind of started already so have a little more time but this is a dashboard it's a really good place to kind of see everything um, then you have your campaigns so campaigns think of the overall point of your emails getting sent out what's kind of cool by default you have your first seller second seller feedback request so this is kind of a, a the first shot that tries then if it doesn't receive anything or a certain amount of time they'll send out a second email the same one or different if you want it but I just had them copied um, and it tells you if they're active or not and the last one is more if you're doing private label you can send out a product review request similar to these guys up here but I have that turned off because I'm not really bothering with my private label right now uh, as far as this goes I'm more kind of concentrating on my books per se so it kind of tells you how many pending emails for each one um, the template themselves are pretty cool you can kinda of look at the templates and see and edit them the best way you can as far as wording things like that what goes out to the customer um, orders orders are pretty cool too you could this is pulling in the information from Amazon right now if you give it a second it'll populate come on there we go so I have about 17 pages of this or so so you can see tells you the order number the order date the delivery date uh, date to send so this date to send is the date that it's gonna send the notification or then the campaign so starting here on the 18th it's gonna send the first seller feedback which is that first template to this person Lois so if Lois Lois made an order for me and they bought a specific book so what happens is on the 18th it's gonna send this first email and then a week later it's gonna send the second email so this one here this order here the date is gonna send is the 15th it's gonna send the second seller feedback because it already sent the first seller notice the last campaign and the next campaign so it does this automatically I barely have to come in here and worry about this based on the settings you set up in your campaign it already knows what to do so it's pretty cool pretty simple um, and it's straight to the point so the only thing I do do is let's say a customer leaves bad feedback what I do is I come here let's say at this order here I'll go to select action I'll say do not solicit selected orders meaning they won't get an email anymore so I'm kinda denying and stopping that request which is something maybe I should do or shouldn't do and meaning why I shouldn't do it is maybe maybe feedback 5 is intelligent is intelligent enough to know that since they left me feedback to not send them another email asking for me feedback um, I guess I've been kinda lazy to not confirm that yet with feedback 5 support but I should but that's just kinda what I usually do and I may not even have to do it but there's other f uh, options here which um, some of them as you can see are, are blank I don't really have that much going on because again I don't use all the bells and whistles in this I mainly just use it for sending email notifications about leaving feedback that's ultimately what I do um, yeah so that's pretty much it here um, there's a quick little glimpse into feedback 5 I hope that was helpful um, if you have any questions feel free to give me a comment in the video and I hope you enjoyed this quick little shallow dive into feedback 5 alright well there you go um, that's feedback 5 again just a little shallow quick dive into there for you I hope it helped out a bit um, again its main function is to resend emails out to kinda nudge and notify customers hey you bought a book for me or you bought something for me please leave me some feedback because that's kinda what I my drive that drives my business it drives my you know growth of my store so you can kinda use any word any wording you want in the actual um, text of the reminder but that's pretty much what it does so I hope this was helpful. Uh, if it was, please go ahead and smash that like button. Uh, also, leave any comments. If you have any questions about it, I'll be more than happy to answer. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe, and you'll get notified when uh, more of my videos come out. Well, that's all I got today. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks. Bye.